How we doing, everybody? Woo, woo, woo. I guess I'd always been I welcome y'all to the into show movies. I've been excited about movies. I loved them. My whole family's watched them. And during COVID, I lost my job, just like a lot of people did. But um, I just kind of felt like it was a chance for me to just take a different avenue, a new career path. And so I decided to try film school out. And um, hopefully, whenever I can graduate film school, if I can make it and find a job, I'm going to make it, but if I can't, I guess I'll got to move somewhere else and try again. To me, anywhere and everything is, is uh, important as far as it's forever. So you try to kind of make it look as right as you possibly, possibly can. You're not wanting to insult the intelligence of the audience, but your resources are limited and you don't have but so much budget and you got to make Birmingham look like Chicago, you know, so you go do that. And we take liberties, but we have to, but uh, we mean well. Being able to tell stories, I've always been kind of a daydreamer, and so getting to have that be my job is kind of like waking up and being a kid. It's a lot of work, but it's uh, creatively a uh, real reward. It has, the pandemic hit everybody, but it hit us really, really, uh, in a really negative way, because of course when you make a film, you have a, a lot of people that come together in close proximity to each other, and we know we got back in, but yeah, it shut it down. It was terrible. Uh, it was a good thing I didn't take all that money and go to Jamaica and spend it, man. It was a thing you put it in the bank and save it because you needed to buy groceries. It, it was uh, it was tough for everybody. Uh, uh, the industry largely shut down. Um, at that during the pandemic, I, I shot and directed part of a TV show called The Fishmonger on the Outdoor Channel. You should check it out. It's really good. Um, uh, but yeah, the pandemic was, it, we, there's still aftershocks because people are still getting sick, so. Oh, it, it shut it down. It completely shut it down, uh, completely all together. It um, caused production companies to start paying less for the material that they're receiving as well. Really uh, lucky to have that TV work that I had with Fishmonger and Dead Meat and Ranch America and um, Sporting Chef. Okay. As far as being important in the state of Alabama, I see it as being important because of the jobs that it brings. Um, people think of jobs in the movie industry just being, you know, whether you're behind the camera or acting, and that's not the case. You have makeup artists, you have lighting, you have construction, you have art department. I mean, there's so many different fields and, and avenues you can take just in the film industry that people just don't even think about. And as far as personally goes, um, movies to me and my family have always been a way that we can connect and it's always brought us a sense of togetherness and even if it's just, you know, for 30 minutes or an hour, it's usually an opportunity to almost escape from, re from reality or any stress or anything you have going on in your life. So is, uh, There's an energy to it, it's very mm -hmm. addicting and then uh, once you wrap and then you go back to not filming it, there's like a... Uh, kind of like a letdown, you're almost like, everything's slow. I'm an independent cinematographer. Uh, I've been in the, in the film and video business for over 40 years. I've dp almost every month they're shooting a feature film in Birmingham. Not simply because it looks like an old New York, but because it's, it looks like a, a generic American city. I don't know how else to describe it, but it's, it's lovely. Lovely place to, 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 to film. Uh, filmed in, in caves in Alabama. Um, the, the mock caves anywhere in the world. We even did a desert scene in a, a sand and gravel pit uh, in Birmingham. And then of course beach scenes down uh, at, the, at the Gulf. The, the tax breaks uh, are good. They're not great, but they're good. Uh, they start at a, a certain budget level and, and cap off uh, to the point where I think they're using them all up every year. And that's one of the business models that a lot of filmmakers uh, from other places are coming into Birmingham and Mobile and making mid to low budget projects that, that get a pretty big kickback from the state, which is which is why Atlanta is, is booming so much. The Alabama Film Office website online, you can go in there and see all of the incentives and the rebates that we actually get. But um, I reached out to Rob Wolf, um, law attorney, who um, was able to give me more information on that. My name is Rob Wolf. I am a uh, local businessman attorney developer in Birmingham. Roughly 25 cents on the dollar that you spend in Alabama, um, you get back as, as a tax rebate. Uh, 35 cents on the dollar for everybody you hire in Alabama. So there's a there's a really good incentive to do 
um, some, some good film here and hire locals and, and purchase locally. Um, so to qualify for that, you have to uh, produce your budget and the application with the Alabama Film Office in Montgomery. They look at it, they approve you, um, make sure your, your, uh, your financing is solid and, and you can have sources of income. And then they, they grant you the uh, a carve out of, of, of our, our limit on our, on our rebate for the year. Uh, our rebate right now is a $20 million gap. Uh, it's, uh, it's funded every year by a vote of the legislature. And it will go away, it can only go away if the Alabama Constitution is, is amended to make it go away. So we, we keep that, we, we're keeping that here. Before COVID, we were about to ask the legislature to raise that because we had a lot of film going on at the same time. We're just now recovering after COVID. But um, that's you know, $20 million cap, and each film has a cap of how much money they can they can qualify for. The, the Alabama wants to level playing field. You have a $30 million movie, they want also to support $3 million movies and $1 million movies. The thing that I've noticed since I started working in the industry many years ago uh, is more work. Uh, more work leads to uh, a bigger talent pool of professionals that know how to do the job. And that's always been the downside because we're, we're, not, we're not LA, we're not New York. So we don't have big camera rental houses, big grip rental houses. We have them a few hours away, but we don't have them here because there's not enough work to keep those people busy. But since we've gotten busier, there are a lot more crew members that, that really know what they're doing and have a lot of experience in the various departments. This is where you want to be. Uh, what we have here is a really good, robust, eager crew system. We have locations that you would not believe. Downtown Birmingham served for 1930 Montreal, 1980 LA, Orange Beach was uh, was Venice Beach. And we have, you know, anywhere you look, you have, you know, downtown LA, you have Mayberry, you have, uh, uh, you know, uh, inner city, and you have all the, all the, you know, farmhouse locations, the country, and big cities that you could ever, ever want here. And one good thing about Alabama is this industry is so nascent that it's easy. It's easy to act, get access to cities, location municipalities, renting production offices. Um, in Atlanta, it's difficult. In LA, it's darn near impossible. There's so many, uh, so many hoops you have to jump through, but it's still easy. It is that the public is starting to be able to have access to be able to post their own media. Which in turn, through, I mean, whether it's through YouTube, TikTok, anything like that, and in turn, less and less people are going out to theaters to see movies, and so that's having a great, great impact on the film industry. Out to former directors that I have worked for, like Michael Casey. Um, I think a lot of it, because very little is filmed in LA now because of tax credits. So tax credits is a big thing. Uh, that's one, ish, one thing, and then also. Uh, crew. I mean, if, if we're shooting in an area, where is the crew coming from? Do we have to fly on the crew in, or is it close to like one of the film meccas, if you will? Uh, so that's important. I mean, I'm less worried about the setting. Like, oh, I wrote the script, so it has to be filmed here. It's more about what is logistically and financially beneficial to the film. I'm, I'm, I'm working on an indie feature film, a, a horror comedy that we're going to shoot here in Alabama. Well, they're coming around. It's not going to happen overnight, but uh, uh, you build it, they will come. That's what we've done, and that's the, they're, they're coming. And it's, it's more and more each day, and also, too, the resources that this state has, you can't hide those. Are, are really, really good, and they don't have to hire crews in LA to shoot. Uh, we've got uh, filmmakers, we've got crew, we've got uh, all of the smoke and mirrors you want to make a movie out here and do work and, and it's catching up. Just get out there and start filming, no, no matter how much experience you have or little experience you have. Just don't waste any time. You get it the first time, you may not get it the second time. You may not even get it the third time. But you will get it eventually. And practice, like they say, practice does make perfect. And this, in this industry, we're constantly changing and adapting to different things, different aspects, different technology. And so you're constantly growing your mind, you're constantly growing your, ta your talent, your, your skills, everything. So just constantly get out there and keep practicing no matter what.
cut. That was good. Check out my Vimeo page.